Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're looking at something quite interesting. Uh, you've seen me do videos on getting good tones out of the Helix. What if you want to use your Helix with a real amplifier? So today we're going to look at ways that you can use your Helix with your amplifier. So suffice to say, you're probably not going to be on in-ear monitors for on, on a gig where you're going to use this setup. At least that's how I would see it. I've actually done this setup before last year. One of the last gigs I had before lockdown was using the amazing Sir PT-15, one of the IRs in it, with my Helix. And it sounded amazing. And on stage as well, had my 2x12 cab here that I was using it with, and it just sounded amazing on stage. And I wasn't using any monitors. Still my guitar. So we're going to talk about ways that you can connect your Helix to your amp. Unfortunately, I don't have the Sir amp anymore. I was only borrowing it from a friend. Uh, today I'll be using my trusty Victory V45 amp, which is uh, the combo version of the V30 that Victory do, which is the, um, I think they call it the, the Jack now. It used to be called the Duke, if I remember correctly. And speaking of my Helix presets, uh, you may have known if you've seen any of my most recent videos that my presets are now available to download on the Line 6 website, on the custom 10 part of the Line 6 website. So I'll stick a link in the description below. Feel free to download those. They are for free, but I have also set up a Buy Me A Coffee page. So if you do appreciate those uh, downloads, uh, you know, the, the availability of, the, of those downloads, or if you just appreciate what I do uh, on this channel, you can buy me a coffee if you want to, uh, and if you can afford it, and I would appreciate that. Also, uh, I have noticed when I, went, when I went on there that the minimum donation was five pounds, and I thought that's a bit much for a coffee. So I figured out that you can drop it down to three pounds. So uh, yeah, so if you, if you haven't, donated but you wanted to but I thought five pounds was a bit steep it is actually less now it's at three pounds right let's check out how to use the helix with a rear lamp so let's start by using the helix as a pedal board going straight into the front of your amp so in terms of the wiring it's very straightforward you just plug your guitar into the input uh, of the of the helix and then out of the quarter inch out just the left side, the mono side, into the front of your amp. And it's like putting a bunch of pedal boards in, into the front of your amp. So if you've got a bunch of pedals, which I've kind of recreated here, doesn't matter which pe what pedals you use, I just kind of created them just generic. Um, and then you just plug it into the, front, into the front of your amp. So here's my clean sound. No reverb, very dry. Here's a bit of compression. Um, but you probably want to check out some of the drives. So here's a clon. Very subtle, subtly set. That's clean. With a clon. Obviously you can set it how you want. And so I'll be on a gig, I'll be having my tube screamer on, maybe with some reverb. There you go, nice and simple, nice and straightforward. Let's uh, ramp things up a bit. So what if you want to do more with your Helix and amp together? What if you want to use the sounds from your amp, 
but also some of the amp models from the Helix and obviously some of the effects which we've done already. Well, this is how we've done it here. Uh, I have, I've had to rewire my connection between the Helix and the amp and I've had to use the four cable method. There's lots of videos on that, so if you want to check some other videos on how to do that properly, you can. But I'll put a diagram on the screen so you can uh, hopefully use it to connect your amp and your Helix together. But but basically, in fact, I'll just quickly explain it. And if you want to go into more detail, you can you can look for some other videos on YouTube. So your guitar goes into the uh, input of the Helix as normal. That's that's your first cable of the four. And then you your the send from the Helix goes to the input of your amp into the front. And then from your amp, the effects send goes to the return of the Helix, which is here. Remember in the Helix, we've got four loops. So I've gone for loop one just to be nice and straightforward. Uh, and the fourth and final cable, your Helix main out. So this one here, that earlier on in the previous pedal platform demo went into the front, now goes to the effects return of your amp. So as you can see in the video, I'm using my Victory V45 combo, which is their combo version of the V30 amp, now called the Jack. It used to be called the Duke, if I remember correctly. And on here I've got V45. So what this is, is I'm choosing to use my amp, and here's how it sounds which you've heard already. Um, what I've also done is I've got this thing here. I haven't labeled it the way I would normally label it, but what this is, this allows me to switch between the clean and the dirty channel on my amp. So if you have a amp which only has two channels, you're switching between the two channels, you can just plug a normal uh, jack, a TR jack, out of the... Uh, on the back here, it's called EXT amp, external amp. Then you plug that into your foot switch socket on in, on the back of your amp or on the front of your amp, depending what amp you've got. Uh, on some amps, I know like some of the Mesa Buigo ones have some funny connections which don't necessarily make it easy. So you, you, they'd be, you'd have to figure out another way of doing that. But on the amps where you've got like a, where you normally have a foot switch that just plugs like a jack into it, maybe like a TRS jack, you can just, you can do this connection I just said. My amp also has reverb. Uh, and that you can, if you have a TRS cable, you can start switching reverb as well. I haven't bothered doing that yet because I'm, well, I'm not going to bother doing that because I'm going to use the reverb on the Helix. Okay, so let's check this out. This is one of my gripes about this, uh, and I think it's actually the amp as opposed to the Helix, but I currently don't have the other end plugged into the amp properly because there's, there's a bit of noise. So check this out. So currently there's very little noise. If I go to my amp and plug it in properly, You can hear that little hum. So that is a bit of a pain. Uh, again, I think it's more the amp than the Helix. I haven't, I haven't been able to try this with another amp with that same kind of connection. So I don't know. But anyway, it does work though. So check this out. And onto my dirty channel. some effects here. Here's, here's some delay. So for the, for the most part of this video, I'm going to leave this switched off. I might even unplug it because it's a bit noisy. Okay, I think for the moment, I'll leave it on for the moment, but what we've got the, for, for here, this is, these two are these two here, they are amp models from the Helix. So if you've got some really weird gig where you've got to have a, like a clean and a dirty channel on your amp, but you also need like a, a jazz chorus because maybe you're doing a, a jazz dinner set. Right, I've just turned, I've just unplugged the uh, the foot switch part on the back of the amp because it was just getting too noisy. So here is our jazz chorus. JC120, Roland JC120, I believe. And I have here the PRS Archon amp if you needed to go to a heavy metal set later on in the show. What I've done though is if I go to snapshot mode, I've just set them up as snapshots at the bottom. They seem to just work better. That's our clean amp. That's our channel two, which I've disconnected at the moment, but we've heard that already, so that's okay. Jazz chorus, let's have a listen to that.
So from our from our amp. get the point uh, and then later on the set maybe you're doing a wedding gig you've just done the dinner set but what they want for the dancing set is heavy metal so I've got my rev generator on the red channel uh, so you can kind of uh, give it some heavy metal And then, I don't know, maybe they want to do another jazz song later. Go back to doing a jazz. Clean amp. With a bit of chorus, maybe. So the important thing here isn't what effects I've got here. So the effects, you can pick whatever effects you want. I've just put some here that I might like. I mean, I would never, I don't think I'd ever really have this setup where I've got my amp channels, a Roland jazz chorus and a rev generator. That just seems a bit weird. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe you would, depending what you're playing. Maybe it's the right sounds for, for, the, for what you're playing. But the important thing is the setup here. You can have maybe a Marshall sound, a Marshall amp, or a, and then maybe a Vox AC30. So on a, on a, say, a function gig, on a covers gig, that's the kind of thing you'd want. You'd want like an AC30. You'd want maybe a Fender type sound or a Marshall type sound. Maybe you like the sound of your amp and you want to use that as well. So this is how you use it all together and you just pick whatever effects you want to use with it. But let's talk about the effects quickly. Not so much the effects themselves, but the fact that we've got two drives here that go before the amp and you've got a chorus. Uh, so, you've got, so you've got these two that go before the preamp, I should say. Uh, and then you've got something like a chorus and a delay and I've actually got a reverb there, which isn't listed here, but the reverb's pretty much always on, except for the rev where I've had it turned off, because you can do that with the snapshots. But they go, they would go after the preamp, which is how you normally do it with your with your amp setup, unless you're kind of going straight in the front like a pedal platform. But even then, you, they would go after the, uh, the drives. So how are we doing this? How are we connecting this? So we've done the four cable method, we've connected them, and then what we want to create is this thing here. This is a send return block and you will find it let me, let me go to it you'll find it basically if you go to your effects go right down to the bottom there's you've got your send return I've plugged into effects loop one remember there's four effects loops which you can kind of see here I kind of prefer two because it's a bit lower and I keep thinking that if someone accidentally steps on this bit here it's less likely to break but I've, I've put it in effects loop one just to, for simplicity's sake uh, and and what that is essentially, even though it's, that's an effects block for your um, effects loop on the Helix, and I guess on your amp as well, I kind of look at that as, as my amp, as the preamp for my amp. So these two are my drive pedals. So here's, here's my Klon, here's my Tube Screamer, making some noise. So they're going before my preamp on my amp. And afterwards, I've got my, in fact, here's, here we go, here's my chorus. And there's my delay, and then the reverb is always on. So I'll point to them in case you don't know what these symbols are meant to mean. Uh, what else have I got here? So these are my amps. So if I go to my jazz chorus, that's my jazz chorus. Now that's switched on. Notice that's switched off, so I don't want my amp playing at the same time. But if I do, 
I can switch that on and I've got my amp playing at the same time if I want to, if I want to blend tones. Uh, and then I've got my rev generator and it switches to that and you notice that the reverb turns off because I don't want any reverb with that one from doing like pure metal. So there you go, there's a couple of ways of using your Helix in conjunction with your real amp. We used it as a pedal platform where we went straight into the front and just used the effects uh, on the Helix like you would a normal pedal board. And for, most of, for the most part, we were in, uh, in stomp box mode. We we sh I showed you how to switch channels on your amp. So if you've got a, f a foot switch on your amp where you have like a jack that plugs in, you can do that with the Helix. You can control it from the Helix. With my amp, it was a little bit noisy. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, the same, if it's the same with other amps. Maybe if you can try this yourself with a different amp, let me know how that goes. And we did the more complicated using your uh, Helix with an amp where you can use your amp tones with channel switching and uh, amp models on the Helix. So if you've got a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, but you wanted the sound of a Marshall JCM 800, you can do that. And then you can also add in, say for example, a matchless DC30 or an AC or a Vox AC30 if you wanted to do that. So you can get these different tones uh, from the Helix, but using your amp of whatever amp you've got. But there you go, I hope that's been useful for you. This is a bit of an ongoing thing for me. Uh, I hope you found some use in that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was eye-opening. And if there's any flaws in what I've done, let me know. I'd like to learn something from you guys as well. Um, apart from that, if you enjoyed this video or if you find any of my videos useful, please like. And also, please, uh, I would appreciate a subscription. That'd be great if you, uh, if you feel like doing that. Uh, you, you can download my Helix presets, check out the playlist, which I'll stick above over there, uh, which you can download uh, for free. But if you fancy, if you appreciate those um, presets, then you can also buy me a coffee. Or if you appreciate what I do in this channel, you can also buy me a coffee as well. Links down below in the description. Anyway, apart from that, I hope you are well, and I'll see you again next week for another video.